Hi, my name is Sky Perry with SSP Innovations. I'm here to talk today about one of our most popular products with uh, the customers. This is probably our most installed product uh, across all of our customers. Uh, and while it has uh, not a big user interface, it has some strict and important aspects to it. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of what the SSP Nightly Batch Suite, or what we call often NBS, uh, does for a utility. So I'm gonna start off by going all the way left here to the framework. We call the NBS a framework because it provides a number of things that are out of the box uh, and provided for all of the applications I'll be talking about today. The first of which is scheduling. It could be nightly, weekly, monthly, annual. Handles the framework for easily scheduling those uh, on, on those types of bases. Uh, next is logging. We do extensive logging uh, within uh, text files uh, and this handles a nicely formatted way to do that with all your applications. Uh, all your licensing, be it Esri or Schneider Electric handled here. Uh, Geodatabase access, you don't ever have to worry about it, you just call and get a connection. Uh, process framework access to get access to your sessions and designs. Uh, WFM from our work management side, full access there. Uh, handles all types of notifications, uh, this is typically things like email notifications. Uh, and then finally, uh, framework code. And what we mean there is it provides a framework that allows us to plug in uh, custom applications uh, that may not fit within the product. So when we go to work, a lot of our customers who own this only own the framework without having all the product applications. And that allows us to more quickly develop and deploy batch applications that need all of these things without having to write them custom every time. So therefore, we just focus in on the actual value we're adding to the customer, as opposed to having to think about, oh, we have to do all this setup around it. So some folks just own the framework as well as some custom applications. Many others, though, own the full suite of product applications. And that's what I'll sort of run you through next. So it's really all about the geodatabase health, uh, the performance, and really giving the geodatabase owner, the manager, whoever that is in your organization, all of the tools and information you need on a daily basis to make educated decisions about the use of the geodatabase. So we've got our geodatabase sort of drawn out here, and I've pre-drawn a couple of items. The first one is our sort of versioning tree over here showing SDE default, uh, a batch edit version in versions one, two, and three, and then our process framework. Pretty standard setup for almost all the utilities we work with. Uh, as we start off there. So if we were running through a nightly type of routine, uh, we'd start off with a number of product applications that we would usually implement. The first one comes in and it does a cleanup on your process framework. So why is this important? This is uh, the, the front half essentially of an orphan version cleanup program, but it automates, automates it for you and does all the logging. So we're gonna go up and find any sessions and any designs that need to be cleaned out of the system to allow our system to operate more efficiently. This could be a deleted uh, record here. It could be one that had already been posted but not cleaned up because of locks. Whatever that may be, we'll get those cleaned out first. So once we have those out of the system, we can move down to the versions. This is sort of the second half of an orphan version cleanup. And we will do a version cleanup here. And that's sort of our number two. So now we're actually getting in and deleting the Orphan versions, meaning the actual SDE versions from the Esri side out of the geodatabase. And that's important because that's going to invalidate some state IDs to allow our compress to be effective. So we get the process framework cleaned up, we get the versions cleaned up, and now we're ready to move forward. Our number three thing that we would typically do is an automated posting engine. And again, this isn't meant to replace a geodatabase manager or any other BRP functionality, but it's really for versions such as a batch edit version. This is a static version that would stay in our system from day to day. Uh, maybe it's being edited by a web application or an external interface like Maximo that might be hitting this. So this allows this to be posted up on a nightly basis to push any edits from that day upward into SDE default. So that's our third, our automatic posting. I'm gonna switch colors since it's getting a little bit busy here. We're gonna move on to our, our fourth, and this is one of the most important things. You probably do some form of it today, but again, we're automating it here in a way that, that really parses it and, and does it very effectively, and that is a batch reconcile. So we start with SDE default. If you have any intermediate versions, we first determine the most optimal reconcile order uh, down from the top to the bottom of the tree. So we are doing a reconciles down on all of these versions here within your state tree. As we go through there, let me go ahead and write that in here. So number four would be our reconcile. 
Reconciles, as we've talked about in our other videos around versioning, are extremely important because that is what identifies any conflicts and also what synchronizes your versions with SDE default. Therefore, again, making your state IDs uh, able to be cleaned out of the database by the compress. So the reconciles there. As we go through that, we aren't sending you emails on every single conflict we find. And again, if you have hundreds or thousands of versions, you might have a number of conflicts every night. Still want to do it. At the very end, out of that reconcile, we send a single email for conflict notification. So we talk and joke about this with a lot of our customers. Uh, this is an email that's waiting for you when you arrive the next following morning and a little bit of apprehension as you open this email to determine how many conflicts do I have to resolve today. The key point is when you're doing it through to this stage on a daily basis, you have a really good handle on your conflicts. And we've got many customers who will talk about how, how large their conflict list started and as they worked through them, how they became much smaller and smaller. You may have a handful on a given day, but very important to get that single email showing all of the conflicts in the system so that you can address them proactively. So number six, as you might guess, when we get beyond uh, getting all our versions cleaned up, reconciled down, posts up, et cetera, is we come in and we do perform a compress. Now this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, but the compress is again what takes those invalid state IDs and moves all the edits from the A and D, the add and delete tables, up into the base tables. So we moved uh, to the base tables, which provides increased performance across the entire geodatabase. Some folks do this weekly, maybe monthly, but again, we're putting it into a nightly basis. We ensure maximum performance based on all of the other things we've done to get to the point number six, which is our compress. Now we've got the database compressed. We want to do some additional things to really clean things up, add performance, and keep you as the GIS manager informed. Number seven is we're going to come in and do a add and delete report. So I'll just put that in as an A slash D report. You might say, what is an A and D report? Well, we've defined this as the ability to monitor all of your add and delete tables in the versioning tree. Nothing too complicated here, but we have it all configurable so that we can go in, parse the entire versioning tree, look at every single A and D uh, table, and there's configurable thresholds. So we might say if any table gets above 1,000 for a small organization. For a larger organization, it might be 10,000. So if we see any A and D table with more than 10,000 records in it, this will be automatically sent via a notification email, you guessed it, out to the GIS manager. Now you know about these, and you know the exact tables where your problems are. So if the poll table is getting really big, you've got that notification proactively. You know there's a potential performance problem before your users call, and that's not something many folks can say. Now we've got the database in good shape. Let's move on to a little bit more performance. Our number eight up here is going to be a geodatabase indexing. So this is a combination of a geodatabase task along with your basic Oracle or SQL Server indexing. When you do this compress, we're moving a lot of data around in the geodatabase from those A and D tables to the base table. So it's very important for us to rebuild those indexes so that the performance in the system goes up. If we haven't rebuilt the indexes, you'll still get some performance boost, but not nearly as much as if we redo your indexing. So we do that typically on a nightly basis. Move on to number nine, which is related. And this is a geodatabase statistics. So let's note that as stats. So again, statistics in a very similar way is updating the way the database understands uh, the size, the volume, the location of all that data within your database. You typically want to do this after your indexing. We often recommend that this is not a nightly test, but we, we, we shoot for a week, weekly, so maybe on every Saturday. After we've done these steps, after we've compressed, after we've indexed, we'll go ahead and rebuild the statistics in the database, again, all around optimizing the performance. All right, so let's move forward back to a nightly application. Now we're getting to some of the more uh, reports that we do. We'll move back over here to the process framework. And one of the interesting things we can do on the business level, so this is more business than geodatabase level, is to parse out your sessions and your designs into what we call an aging report. So this will be number 10, your aging report. So this aging report over here is really looking at all of the sessions and designs, how long they've been outstanding, giving you an automated list uh, including the information you need most to keep an eye on the system. So if you've got sessions that have maybe been in there over 30 or 60 days, your eyes get drawn to those very quickly the next morning. So maybe you want to go check with that editor to see if they need to post that session up or what the status is at least. 
Design's outstanding. You know, work management integrated design systems, we get these designs that sit out there for months, maybe even over a year, hopefully not multiple years, but we've seen that too. So when those sit out there, it's really important to be proactive because every design has a geodatabase version. Every version, of course, has A&D edits, which have impacts to your performance. So we want to keep a good eye on those designs and maybe be chasing some of those down as time goes on to, again, full circle, improve the performance. So the aging report gives you the information. It could be daily, could be weekly. You can figure it however you want to with the framework, but it gives you the information you need to make some decisions. All right, let's move on to a monthly report. I'm going to move to this side here, and this is going to be number 11, which is our permissions report. Really important in a large-scale system are permissions. We may have thousands of users that have access to the geodatabase, and we need to manage these folks and these roles and these permissions proactively. If we just let it go by the wayside, things are guaranteed to get out of sync. So if we look at the three different reports that we often generate here, and this is, again, monthly basis, the first one, I'll just put a little sub-bullet here, is going to be users in a role. So this is an Excel spreadsheet that's going to get emailed practically to you every month, and it's going to show every role in the system, your MM admin, your MM user, your electric edit, your electric view, your land base editor, you get the idea, all of those roles that have been defined. And it's going to show you in columns every single user account that has access to that role, which defines what they can do in the system. So you should never have a question over having to chase down who has access uh, to be an electric editor versus a gas versus telecom. You've got that report proactively sitting there on a monthly basis. The next one we do, which is really important in a large organization, is related to the users again, but it's a user's delta report. So this delta report, similar to the users enroll, looking at the same data, but now we're actually capturing data on a month-to-month -month basis. So this calls your eye very quickly to what has changed. So this will show me who has been added to the electric editor role, who has been removed from the electric editor role, and I can determine, did that occur correctly? If maybe a user has left our organization, I will now know, have they been removed from the geodatabase correctly or do I need to take further action? If a new users come in, I can also validate they got all the permissions that they needed on day one. Let's move down to our third permissions report. This is really about the role permissions. So in our role permissions report, you basically get yet another spreadsheet, which has every role in the database, again, listed across the top. However, now we're not focused on users. We're focused on what that role can actually do within the geodatabase. So we're thinking now the electric editor role should have edit against the poll, against the conductor, against the service points. You get the idea. If we see that the electric editor role has access against the land to edit parcels, that might be a red flag to us. So how often do you know exactly what each role in the system can do? This puts it into a spreadsheet format, again, proactively delivered to your inbox on typically a monthly basis. So these three things are really important. Again, the larger your organization, the more important these are going to be to you. And our final one, I'll just sort of draw a dotted line down here for number 12, is that we have some very generic cleanup applications. We do things like cleaning up your file disk. Example here. Uh, if you deployed either our transformer manager or maybe our work management system, you can use this to clean up our, our dynamic reports directory, which can grow over time. So you might run this weekly, uh, nothing too big there. Uh, another one that we recently added was an Orica, Oracle keyset cleanup. If you use Oracle, you are very familiar with the keyset tables. Per each user, these things get stacked up inside the geodatabase, and there's table upon table of keyset tables. You don't need those after the fact, so again, we built a batch application that will clean those out of the geodatabase. So there's a handful of others here. I don't want to go into all the details now, but sort of looking holistically at what the product does, hopefully you have a better feel. It's all about the geodatabase. It's all about performance, efficiency, and again, informing you as the GIS manager the information you need to know before you need to know it. And that'll allow you to make better decisions. So the final thing I want to talk about is just some other product applications over here, just so you know they exist. If you are a workforce management uh, product user from SSP, we've got a handful here with the work request status sync between our work management and GIS, uh, GIS metadata extract, designer CU sync, so some more things that plug in. How do they plug in? With the framework code. So those are all products. You literally flip these things on, integrate them in, and they can run very easily. Down to our Transformer Manager product, similar things here around the lifecycle synchronization between Transformer Manager and the GIS. And then finally, 
almost everywhere we go. Some folks just use the product, but we've always got a handful of custom applications in it, most uh, locations. You might guess these center often on systems integration points, where our system needs to talk to an external system, but it doesn't need to be real time. We might be pinging that system on a nightly basis or transferring data. Really easy way, and again, the framework allows us to spend the time writing the application code that matters to the integration, not worrying about all of these other things over on the far left. So we've got custom apps there, tons of other uses as you might guess. Talk to one of our users, they mo more than likely have the SSP Nightly Bash suite. It can tell you a little bit more about the custom apps they have, and then whatever flavor of combination uh, of the product applications they use as well. In the end though, our goal is to make you smarter, faster, better, with regard to your geodatabase. And hopefully this tool explanation will understand how that accomplishes the task. Thanks. Them line men, them fine men, straight masterpieces. Zooming, panning, disconnected in the city. Inspecting, perfecting. Gotta kiss this map, it's so pretty. We're too high. On a silver room to catch fire, man. Too high. Make a rival start to press fire, man. Too high. Why?